Good evening, my name is Elizabeth Gregorian and I am with Glendale Library Arts and Culture. This evening, in honor of Armenian Genocide Remembrance Month, we are pleased to be hosting Harry Vorperian's dialogue with Bosgen Burudian on creating design industry in Armenia. On behalf of the Glendale Library Arts and Culture, I would like to thank you for joining us today. Bosgen Burudian is an architect, designer, and an artist from Los Angeles, California. Having studied both art and architecture has enabled Burudian to employ the knowledge of both disciplines in his work. His artistic work has been exhibited in both solo and group exhibitions in museums and galleries across the United States. Burudian has been residing in Yerevan, Armenia since 2013. In partnership with Simonian Educational Foundation, Brutian established Ardian Design in 2014, dedicated to transformative advancement of art, architecture, and design in Armenia. In 2017, Ardian became an independent organization. Brutian is also the founder and the director of Center for Art, Architecture, and design in Armenia, a nonprofit foundation established in 2019. Harry Vorperian is a painter and a graphic designer, whom for years has owned and managed an art gallery, design studios, and has taught art to young students and adults. In 2011, he founded the Shushi Art Project which in October 2012 held its first event, a contemporary art festival in Shushi Artsakh. This unique project brought together 20 artists with diverse backgrounds from the US as well as Europe, Armenia, and Artsakh. In 2015, he co-organized the Life 100 exhibition dedicated to the 100th anniversary of the Armenian Genocide. Gorperian solo exhibitions include The Eye and Lily's Garden. And now I will turn the virtual mic over to Harry and Buzgin. Thank you. Thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you, Glenda Library Art and Culture, for giving us this opportunity for me to be able to talk to an artist, a designer, an architect, and a good friend of mine, Vasken Brudian. Thank you, Vasken, for joining us. Thank you, Elizabeth and Glendale Library Arts and Culture. For, for this opportunity, it's a pleasure. I'm a local from Glendale, so it's always a pleasure to come back and uh, speak to uh, people that I know. Excellent. Uh, Vasken, instead of me talking about you, I'm going to ask you to give us a brief background of who is Vasken Brudian. Uh, okay, thank you. Uh, I'm an architect, as you know, uh, Harry. I lived here in Los Angeles for the past 35, 40 years. I'm originally uh, born in Egypt, lived in Armenia, but with my family, we immigrated. Um, when I was about 14 years old. Uh, so all my education after that has been in Los Angeles. Uh, I studied architecture at USC. And um, later on, uh, I started my own uh, company after working for many different um, organizations, uh, companies. And uh, um, for many years, I was working here. Uh, we also, I also had um, a gallery here, as you know. And um, after that, um, you know, luck brought me that I uh, decided to go and teach in Armenia um, at TUMO. Uh, many of your, our audiences probably know uh, TUMO Center for Technologies. Um, and I, it was a tremendous pleasure. And uh, I enjoyed working with my students very much. And that gave me the, that was the catalyst for me to 
think about uh, moving to Armenia and starting the company and uh, working with my students initially and then making it grow and uh, well, that's what we are doing now. Uh, by the way, at this point, I want to introduce you as well, Harry. Uh, as you thought, we go way back and uh, you have done many, many things. Uh, among, among those which, which all of us in the creative uh, sector remember fondly is the Shushi Fest Art Festival that you, you did uh, when we were, when, um, uh, yeah. was still... Uh, it was called the Shushi Art Project that happened in 2012. Yeah. Well, it's, uh, it's uh, in fresh in our memory in all of us and hopefully you'll get a chance to do it again if not in Shushi sometime soon but at least in Stefan. I hope so. I hope so. Thank you Vaskin. Today is your day so uh, let's talk about you. You mentioned that you were here in the States for uh, uh, almost 40 years and then you, you went back or you moved to Armenia. Uh, you really like we jumped there, but what was the real? The, I mean, were you ready to do, for that move, or just like was it an op opportunity you grabbed it? Um, no, it wasn't an overnight decision. To be honest, as I mentioned, two more. Uh, I well, while I was um, traveling to Armenia as a visitor, often uh, one time I was uh, uh, mentioned that. Uh, an organization, a, a nonprofit organization, is about to open, which uh, is going to teach uh, technology and the uh, design and arts uh, free of charge to any students between the ages of um, 11 and 19. Uh, the idea of uh, uh, such such an idea was very very enticing for me and. At that point, I decided that uh, as soon as it opens, it uh, wasn't open at that time, but as soon as uh, it opens, I was going to come and uh, uh, teach there. And uh, the, first, uh, uh, the first time that I went to Armenia was, uh, to, the first time that I went to Armenia to teach was actually um, a few months after Tumo opened up. And uh, it was such a pleasure. I had uh, roughly between 80 to 100 students, and it was such a pleasure uh, to work with young uh, students in Armenia that I decided to do it again the following year um, for a little bit longer. And uh, following uh, six months later, I asked uh, uh, the administration of TUMO to give me the best students. Uh, my idea was that we can create something uh, that is a little bit more lasting than the workshops that I was doing. And uh, what I wanted to do is uh, um, create designs in Armenia uh, based in based on our uh, Armenian heritage, that can be uh, production, that can uh, pre can can be produced, and actually um, can create uh, employment as well. Um, you know, I'm very much uh, interested in technology. Uh, I've always been both in architecture and design. Um, technology has been a very uh, a strong part of my uh, uh, resume. I could say, I should say. Um, I wanted to teach uh, what we can do with technology in Armenia to those students. And it turned out that, uh, especially during the last workshop, which was uh, three months long, uh, we came up with uh, outstanding designs that could be produced and could be uh, marketed, not just in Armenia, but internationally. And that, that's where the idea uh, came about that I moved to, Ar that I moved to Armenia. And I came back at the time I had, uh, I had my architectural office um, in, uh, in Los Angeles at Atwater. Uh, I decided not to take any more uh, projects. And after six months, I, uh, you know, um, we finished all our projects and I moved to Armenia for one year to see what I can do in Armenia in one year. After one year, uh, it's been seven years now. That one year has turned into seven years. So. Uh, it's been a, a pleasant uh, seven years, I could say. And I can also mention successful seven years. Mm -hmm. uh, just for people to know, the, your background is one of your works. And just uh, to explain, uh, as, as an Armenian, I see Armenian letters there, words. How did you, and I remember years ago, uh, years ago, uh, I came to one of your exhibitions in LA, 
and I bought a small uh, piece of yours. And that, and whatever is right behind you right now, they have, there's a connection there. So when did this whole thing started with the Armenian alphabet and the Armenian uh, uh, icons in your work? And how did it start? And why did it start? You remember it very well, Harry. And I, um, yes, uh, I, re I actually remember the piece uh, that you purchased from uh, uh, the exhibition that we did here. Uh, you know, as I mentioned, I was always interested in technology and the paintings that uh, I was doing here, the artworks that I was doing here, were based on uh, technology and handwork uh, combination. Yeah, so uh, uh, there were uh, images that I was creating, uh, maybe with photography or digital, but um, uh, intermixing it with uh, handwork, brushwork. Yeah, so paint. Uh, pastel, uh, various media. And, um, you know, I, it became, uh, I don't know, quote unquote, the style that uh, I, I became uh, known with. Um, so when I went uh, to uh, Armenia, uh, as I mentioned, I, I was very much interested in uh, technology and also production. So we used the techniques that I was using here uh, to produce uh, uh, artwork with my students that are uh, similar in uh, production or in a way of producing, but they include um, Armenian um, writings, Armenian uh, ornaments or, uh, from architecture, from cross stones. You know, since uh, I was in Armenia, I was obviously, first of all, impressed and uh, inspired but, uh, by our um, very rich heritage that we have. So uh, uh, we started designs with uh, my students and uh, we use the techniques that I've become familiar with uh, throughout the years. And uh, as you, you mentioned it correctly, what you see behind me is a, um, a piece um, created with that same technique. Uh, we have uh, the words are from St. Gregory of Narek's uh, Book of Lamentation, so it, there are prayers, uh, but, and they are layered, uh, printed, of course, uh, on canvas, but also um, hand-worked uh, with brushworks, with acrylic, with paint, and so forth. So yes, this also became um, one of the, um, the styles that we have uh, uh, pioneered in Armenia in, uh, in the direction of our Armenian heritage. And uh, how's the reception there when people see your, the work? Are they like, wow, or they're like, uh, these are like our prayers on, on plates or, uh, I'm, I'm sure you, you felt, you got some reactions from, I'm sure most, uh, let, me, let me put it this way. I've, I'm not just, not, I'm not just saying it. It's whenever I gift something like this to you, your pieces, they just love it. So I want to know how you heard the reactions, how, how you're perceiving those. Uh, you know, I'm, I didn't know what to expect uh, because it's a completely new technique. Uh, but I have to say the reception has been outstanding, both in Armenia and in diaspora. Um, as, uh, as we talked, we started our own company, Ardian. Uh, the word Ardian, uh, just to explain a little bit, means... Uh, uh, it comes from the word Ardiakam, it's the uh, Grapa, the classical Armenian uh, root, root word. And um, as the word says, we go back and we take uh, uh, from uh, the past um, various uh, elements and we put it in, uh, in design and we create new designs with them. Um, the reception has been outstanding. We had uh, exhibition at Cafe Gian Art Center, which is one of the primary uh, museums in Armenia. We had solo exhibitions. We had exhibitions in New York and Los Angeles. Uh, we, uh, we did the stages, um, uh, both in New York in, uh, at the Opera, Yerevan Opera House, and uh, also in uh, Gyumri. So the reception has been outstanding. And uh, the, the pieces that we also create uh, as production 
are made beyond textiles, they're made beyond glass or porcelain items, all of which that carry the Armenian uh, heritage on them, has, uh, has had a fantastic uh, reception and I'm very, very happy uh, to say that. And they, actually the whole purpose of that was um, to create uh, employment in Armenia. Uh, the, the, the purpose that I moved to Armenia was to um, create or enhance uh, uh, a creative industry in Armenia. And uh, I, I think um, we are, I am, I am happy to say that at least we have been uh, one of those companies that have pushed that envelope and we have created a, a, a way for other companies to follow us. And, uh, yeah. I strongly believe that the creative industries, especially the design industry in Armenia, is something that needs to be nurtured and uh, needs to grow. Uh, as you know, Armenia within the past 15 years or uh, 20 years, uh, the uh, IT industry has grown tremendously. And uh, actually it has created uh, a middle class with the young people, yeah? The, the, influ the influential class is mostly today mostly comes from the IT industry. Uh, I strongly believe that the design industry is also something that uh, Armenia is very capable of doing on the international market, not just in the Ar Armenian market, but internationally we can compete uh, extremely well um, with um, countries like Belgium or Italy or France that have very strong design industries. There's no reason um, just like in those countries that any of the uh, GDP of, uh, of their uh, design industry or the creative industry is between uh, 8 to 11 percent, there is no reason why Armenia's GDP cannot be the same and uh, we cannot have a second uh, industry just like the IT industry that creates uh, uh, well-paying uh, employment much better than production that we constantly speak about. Uh, so well-paying employment in Armenia is something that is very important and I strongly believe that the design industry can do that. And we're, that's what we're trying to do with, with our company, with Ardian, to show that we, are, we can be very competitive and we can be uh, on the international market, we can be very competitive and hopefully our products show that. Okay, that's why you moved up, let's say, from uh, Tumo, and you started Ardian, which you explained the meaning of it. Let's talk more about that. So the reason you started Ardian was to start the design industry. Uh, besides Ardian, are there any others that we should know about, or are there efforts to, as you said, to, to, to have the design industry to become the next IT industry? Army. There, there are actually there. It's uh, it's uh, something that is. I think uh, within uh, the next five years, uh, we are going to hear much more of it. There are many good examples. Uh, Tumo is actually where I started teaching. is a very good uh, place. I think we are lucky to have uh, an institution such as that in Armenia because it teaches. It has the natural recognition now. I just want to. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. So, I mean, yeah. And uh, like if people don't know about it, it's spelled T-U-M-O. You can go and check it online, Google it, and you'll, you'll see the kind of uh, uh, work that they do. It's yeah. amazing, amazing building, the whole world. We have um, uh, an organization in Armenia that uh, teaches uh, uh, anything to do with technology, design or film or animation and uh, robotics and so forth for free for anyone uh, between the ages of 11 and 19. That gives a tremendous uh, uh, start for, for a country uh, to have, uh, you know, uh, the, the popular, the number of students that learn it to more roughly around 14,000 if I don't, uh, yearly, yearly students I'm talking about. That's a tremendous opportunity for uh, someone like me who is looking uh, to create a company. Uh, now, Tumo is a nonprofit organization and it's, uh, it's uh, education based. But uh, someone like me who is also interested in commercial ventures, uh, it's, uh, Armenia becomes a fantastic place because you already have um, 
a student body, let's say, or a body that you can go and tap into that already has some knowledge that you don't have to start from scratch. Uh, of course, what we do, we, we take the students and we um, uh, teach what, what is needed for us, but they also, they already have the base. So if you're not starting from scratch, you're not starting from zero. So uh, that's a tremendous um, leg up, I can say. Uh, compared to other countries. Uh, also, uh, there are other small, small companies that are starting up. And uh, I think uh, what we have been preaching for the past, uh, I don't know how many years, that the design industry is uh, something that Armenia needs to look at it more carefully. I think larger organizations such as uh, EU or uh, UN and uh, who fund uh, parts of the arts in Armenia are looking at it more, much more closer, closely. So we are happy to say that uh, we, we were right there at the beginning and uh, hopefully we were, uh, with our work, we will be able to the catalyst to start something like that. Okay, now let's talk more about RDN itself. What kind of products you produce? What kind of, uh, uh, you, you mentioned, uh, shawls or uh, textiles. Um, what are the let's say uh, different types of uh, materials that you have okay um, first of all Ardian um, if you have any samples if you can share with us that will be good if you want I have some uh, videos and uh, we can show you some of the work that we are doing okay. um, just uh, to mention that Ardian has uh, two components to it one is the commercial uh, side to it uh, which is, um, uh, you know, the, the products that we uh, design and uh, produce uh, uh, and market it, market it internationally. Uh, and the other side is the uh, nonprofit portion of it, where we teach and we um, uh, have discussions and we have um, gatherings at our, at our location. So, uh, Education and teaching is also a very strong part of Ardian, and uh, uh, so the two go hand in hand. Uh, just to give you uh, uh, a sample of uh, some of the exhibitions that we have done, um, I can show you a, a small video. This was the breath exhibition uh, that we uh, did at Tafajian Center for the Arts. Uh, it was uh, done between uh, myself and uh, my 40 students at the time uh, and uh, it took it was uh, dedicated to two people St. Gregory of Narek uh, whose uh, words we uh, used for as elements for the paintings and Mafitar uh, Herazi uh, whose um, uh, plants were used as medicine uh, he's a, a medieval medicine man, as we can say. So uh, the idea was uh, Narekatsi, who used words to heal the soul, and uh, Heratsi, who used plants to heal the body. It's the... Um, so this was uh, one of the exhibitions that we did at the Café Jean. The other exhibition that I can show you. So these are canvases? Yes, these are uh, prints and handwork on canvas. Yeah. And, and also course, we're done with uh, approximately 40 students. So every design and every uh, painting was um, a combination of uh, hand handwork and uh, technology. And as our audience, these are their huge canvases, big works. Beautiful, excellent. Now, uh, after this, we started doing installations in uh, we say Khonarvats, it's a, a ruin, uh, um, churches that are ruins that are still standing or partially standing. And the idea was that we wanted to call attention 
uh, to uh, to these uh, ruin uh, buildings, which in my opinion they're not ruins; they're actually um, complete structures in and themselves. For example, the one that you are seeing right now is uh, Lusavorich uh, Monastery in uh, Lori region, and you know it has uh, the scars, the scars of earthquakes, the scars of Mongol Tatar. Uh, um, invasions. Invasions. Uh, they have they have uh, the scars of uh, from 11th century. But we bring modern uh, paintings to them, and we create installations. We bring Narekatsi, the words of Narekatsi, back to the 11th century structure, and uh, we see, uh, at least I see, some kind of a continuum that um, uh, you take the words of Narekatsi and you bring it back. Uh, where it belongs in a way, and you make a connection with the past. Beautiful. Thank you, thank you. And uh, you uh, ask what we are doing recently. Uh, recently we have started uh, uh, doing architecture, as, you, as I mentioned. I, I used to have an architectural office uh, here in Los Angeles, so I'm an architect by profession. And I, uh, the reason we didn't start with architecture is um, because uh, uh, my students were not architects, so we started doing uh, various designs. Uh, but now I'm very much interested in doing architecture and I've, uh, I'm working with young architects uh, uh, to design buildings and uh, uh, to come up with ideas. And ideas that we have are very similar to um, what we do with um, all of our work. So we take um, various uh, ornaments from Armenia's past, uh, may it be architecture or cross stones, but we mix, uh, we uh, interject it with modern architecture. I'm a modernist in every, every sense, uh, as, as far as architecture goes. Uh, so we like to we we like to think that we're bringing uh, regional architecture, Armenian regional modern architecture, besides the architecture and the huge. Uh, canvases that you have. I know that you also produce uh, other items such as uh, shawls or uh, plates. Can you talk more about those? Yeah. Those are things that people might be able to afford. <laughs> <laughs> uh, actually, that's how we started and uh, that's how we be. In I, don't want, I, don't, I don't want to sound like we're selling it, but I just <laughs> I want to introduce what Ardian does, so that's why uh, Thank you. we're the shopping uh, to be, to, to be honest, that's how we started. Because, yeah. uh, as I mentioned, I wanted, uh, um, at the beginning, I wanted a company that is a commercial uh, venture. So I, my interest was to create employment in Armenia. And to do that, you had to have a, a profitable company. And uh, uh, since my students, as I mentioned, they're not, they were not architects, we started with the designs that we had done uh, for uh, for the exhibitions, for paintings, and um, you know, I see Ardian as a company that creates uh, images, and the images are used in various forms. Textiles is one of them, as you mentioned. We uh, as textiles, we do shawls, we do scarves, uh, we do uh, uh, tablecloths and runners and so forth, and that's how we initially started, and the. Uh, we, still, we actually and they all have the same design concept uh, the, the Armenian motifs the icons exactly yes uh, and um, we started uh, we actually opened our own store on Abogian uh, and um, it actually it became very which is in Yerevan Armenia it is in Yerevan Abogian Street which is right next to uh, Republic Square right at the center right at the center uh, so um, we became known for um, for our textiles, for our porcelain items, for our glassworks, uh, and so forth. And uh, uh, of course, uh, yeah, at the at the store we also had our um, uh, artworks as well. And that that's uh, the, the, there were the two main um, areas that we were working in for a couple of years until we started uh, the office the gallery, which is also on Abogian Street. Um, and uh, we started with, uh, you know, in, uh, immediately afterwards, we started with architecture. And well, luckily we did that because 
um, you know, we were very much uh, based on the tourist industry of Armenia. And uh, with the COVID, uh, starting with the COVID, uh, of course, everywhere the tourism stopped. But with the architectural projects, we were able to continue and actually grow. So I'm happy to say. Good. And uh, if you foresee the future, which branch you think is going to expand or or it's going to be like on equal grounds or which, would, one, which one do you hope? I, mean, I would like to see it on equal grounds. Uh, we are still going to make uh, uh, products and I think that we're going to uh, expand the, the line that we have in various areas. Um, our uh, silk uh, uh, textiles, uh, which is shawls and uh, 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 scarves are very, very popular. And uh, I don't think uh, um, in Armenia they have become kind of a, uh, a symbol of a nice gift. We, we work with um, most of the ministries, most of the uh, uh, embassies, then they give, uh, they give that as a gift. And uh, we, we enjoy that. And it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's an honor for us that uh, we represent. We appreciate it, actually. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's a fantastic thing. Uh, it makes us popular. <laughs> um, artwork during the past year, especially during the COVID years, has grown tremendously. Uh, it was one of the um, uh, strong, uh, strong points uh, of our uh, revenue uh, during 2020. And um, in the, uh, so we're definitely going to continue that and we'll, we will see that expanded as well. Uh, we are looking to have exhibitions, not just uh, in museums in Armenia, but also in museums in Europe and maybe United States, and we're working towards that. So the installations um, at various places are going to continue. In addition to that, architecture has become, uh, um, we are now, uh, becoming very well known with our architectural work uh, because uh, I, I think they're unique and uh, uh, it's something that we do it and it's very Armenian and it's very mo modern and uh, it has uh, brought somewhat of notoriety in Armenia and I'm very happy with that and uh, uh, we're definitely going to expand that as well. So I'm, I'm seeing uh, uh, a bright kind of uh, uh, next few years for Ardia. And that's part of the growing design industry. Of Absolutely. And not just for Ardian. Um, uh, you, you are very right. And not just for Ardian. I think the whole creative industry is going to grow tremendously. And uh, I, um, I call upon all the creative people uh, you know, in the diaspora who is watching and uh, uh, would like to uh, do some kind of a venture like this. I think Armenia is one of those places that... Um, it's, uh, it's a fantastic place to start some kind of uh, anything that is based on design uh, for several reasons. First of all, uh, as a nation, as people, uh, we have created for thousands of years. Yeah? Um, our monasteries go back to the sixth century. Uh, and uh, uh, just in a small land of Ar Armenia, we have uh, over 600 monasteries, churches, and no two is alike. In that small land, we also have uh, cross stones, hajkars, uh, over 50,000 uh, cross stones that no two is alike. Uh, in addition to that, we have uh, hundreds of thousands of manuscripts at Madenataram. And I'm uh, not even speaking of the uh, uh, rugs or carpets that we have produced. Actually, I was going to add that the, the rugs, because uh, uh, people sometimes underappreciate the art. I'm going to call the art of rock making because that's Absolutely. Western, uh, uh, in the West, oil painting or frescoes were, are considered art. And in, in, in general, people consider all oh, those, that's art. But mm -hmm. people forget the, uh, the rug industry or the art of creating the rugs, which is like, Amazing! You look at the old uh, rugs, and they're like, and you can you can compare it to modern. Sometimes the modern art, the iconography, or so it's like the rugs should be added to. <laughs> Absolutely, and you know it's very much interconnected uh, with our manuscripts and our custom uh, ornaments. Yeah, uh, many of the uh, 
uh, motifs that you see in rugs are actually taken from either crossbones or manuscripts. So they're very much interrelated. And they're very much need to be considered as part of our uh, cultural art his, um, uh, heritage. So all of these things put together, um, it's obvious that as a nation, we have been a creative nation. Yeah, we have been uh, producing uh, extremely high art for centuries. And that's part of our DNA. And uh, we, uh, what we are doing only at this point is uh, bringing it up to date to 21st century technology and to a 21st century uh, mindset. Yeah, and that's all, that's all we do. Everything else is already there. Our um, eyes, our, um, the way we, we create is already, is already there. That's one of the reasons that I think Armenia is a fantastic place to have a, a creative industry. The other thing is we are a landlocked country or we're landlocked. Uh, and uh, to have a production industry, you need to send it out whatever you're producing. But if you are producing something in design, that's, uh, you know, all you have to do is press of a button and it appears anywhere in the world. So you're not uh, confined uh, to, um, to your neighbors or uh, the confinement that we have uh, in production. Uh, so um, all of this put together, I think Armenia within the next five to 10 years is going to become a tremendous uh, center for creativity and creative industries. Um, Excellent. Excellent. And uh... To wrap up this conversation, uh, I'm going to give you the last word and speak your mind. Uh, you know, Armenia, we, we, we had a difficult year last year, uh, this year. Um, 2020 was a difficult year, uh, was a difficult to take, and uh, both COVID and obviously the, the war. Um, but I like to say that we are at a place of rebirth. Uh, we are a place of um, becoming even stronger that, than we were before. Yes, we're going through some turbulent times. We're going through uh, part of history, maybe, uh, that uh, in 50 years or 100 years, we will look back and we will look at it as a turbulent times. But I also strongly believe that we are going to come out of this even stronger than before and we are going to um, accomplish many of the things that we have thought and uh, uh, we just did not have the opportunity. So uh, I, I like to invite everyone uh, to come to Armenia and see it done by, them, uh, to, uh, by themselves. Uh, all of this is taking place and there are many young people who are taking root in the design industry and in creative industries and in every industry, to be honest. And it's a worth seeing by everyone in diaspora. We're full of talent in our mediums. Just amazing talent. Yes. All of us. Yes. Uh, All of us as a nation, both in Armenia and diaspora. Uh, Laskan, thank you very much. It was very interesting interesting to hear about your ventures and I wish you luck and hope to see you soon. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thanks. The best things come out when two artists meet and have a conversation. Thank you to Buzgin and Harry for this presentation on the RDN Gallery a dedicated center to transformative advancement of art, architecture, and design, an archetype for local design companies and brands. Once again, thank you for joining us this evening, and a heartfelt thanks to Buzgin and Harry. Have a wonderful evening and stay safe.